Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, we're gonna do this Terminator vision as I did in a recent quick little video called Friend or Foe. Now, before we get started, special thanks to a couple of people. Um, one is Brian Thackeray, and he's the one that helped me film this, and he's the one wearing the glasses. And the other special thanks is to iView for letting me use these camera glasses. Now, if you want to learn more about iView, there's a link in the description and where you can click over and maybe if you wanted to buy these glasses. And if you would also go check out Brian's channel, he's trying to start up a movie review um, entertainment kind of uh, channel with news and things like that. So check him out and go subscribe. Okay, let's get started with this tutorial. I have the footage here in a composition. And the reason why I did that is because there was a sp spot here in the middle that I cut out. And so I just kind of pre-comped it together. And in order to kind of hide this cut, I want to try something. And uh, you'll see that here in a second. So what I did to this footage, let's take a look at the original. As you can see, it's kind of green. There's some scan lines and everything's all warpy. Uh, we also have these different little numbers and things on here. So let's start with um, adding some of the effects to it. First thing I'm going to do is let's change this green. So highlight my footage, color correction, we'll just tint it, and we'll map the white to a green, and then I'm going to drop the amount a little bit. Now let's add um, a scan lines over top of this. Uh, some people use like Venetian blinds to do that. What I prefer to do is grab a new solid and then go to generate grid. Let's take this where the size from corner point due to width and height sliders. Let's take the width, make it as wide as you can, like 4,000, and then we'll move it off to one side. And then let's bring the border down to say like three, and the height to about 10. And then I also might bring the opacity down a little bit as well. I prefer to do it this way because I like the white lines. The Venetian blinds will just do black because it'll actually cut lines into your footage. Now let's go about hiding this cut we have here. So let's find exactly where that cut is. It's right there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create kind of like a static -y look in the footage. So let's grab a new solid, call it static, then go to noise and grain, and let's just add some noise HLS, and let's bring up lightness, maybe the grain size, it's looking pretty good. Now to this, go to Distort, Turbulent Displace. And under the Turbulent Displace settings, switch it to Horizontal Displacement. Let's bring the amount up. Under the pinning, pin to none. Bring the size down. Amount way up. As high as it'll go. Looks like 10,000 is its highest. Bring the complexity up so you get kind of a this look to it and it's not moving so we want to add some animation to this so we'll do, we'll just do that by changing the evolution and we're going to add a quick expression to this so down, hold down option on your keyboard if you're on a pc hold down alt click on the stopwatch and type time and you do a time sign let's go 1000 something really large so moving really fast that's looking pretty good now, let's add an adjustment layer. Let's call this one Static Adjust, because it's the static adjustment layer. Let's stick it up higher. And on this layer, let's add, let's just grab this Turbulent Displace, copy that, and let's put it right onto that Static Adjust layer. But under the amount, go to 500, looking pretty good. On the Static Adjust, on the Static layer, let's bring those opacity down maybe even more yep that's a good pretty good 40 percent right there all right now what we need to do is we need to make a controller for this so it doesn't matter which one you do either the static adjust or just the static layer we need to add a controller to this so let's do the top one the static adjust go to effect expression controls add a slider and then what i'm going to do is this amount in the turbulent displace pick whip that to the slider and then times it by five 
And then on the static layer, the one that we created with the noise, go into the opacity and right now it's set at 40%. We need to remember that. Pick with that. to the slider and then times it by 0.4. So when the slider goes to 100, it'll be at 40%. And then what we've got here is a little controller that controls both layers. So let's kind of move forward a little bit. Let's say right here, let's keyframe that slider, go forward three frames, bring it to 100, go forward three frames, bring it back down to zero. And then if I hit U on the keyboard, it'll bring up those keyframes. And then we can see just quick creates a little, a little static, like there's some interference. Okay, so let's copy those and let's find where that other spot is that I want to cover up. It's right there. Okay, and then maybe one more right here. And I'm just pasting those keyframes. All right, looking pretty good. Now, after that last one, let's go and just cut those. Now let's go in and let's do the optics compensation. And that's what made everything look, you see how everything's kind of warped on the side. So let's add a new adjustment layer. This one's gonna go at the very top and we'll just call it optics. Go to your distort menu and go to optics compensation. And then click on this button that says reverse lens distortion. And let's bring up, say about 60. And then that's what kind of creates this look on the sides. You also want this as an adjustment layer so it affects everything below it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create kind of a quick little guide layer. So let's just click off so we're not highlighting any layers and I'm going to use I just double clicked on that square and then it created the square here and this is just a rectangle and let's take the fill and delete it call it guide and let's take that optics compensation copy it paste it onto the guide and then take off the reverse layer now what happens is when we turn off the optics compensation we know where our view is going to be so i like to keep this off because it gets kind of difficult to work in that way and i just turn off that adjustment layer until the very end um, but this way we know where it's going to be. And say we want to maybe go in and um, adjust the amount. Well, what I can do is I'm going to go into this guide layer, take that field of view, and pick whip it to the field of view of the other layer. And so then they're going to be the same. So maybe we want this at 65, and then it still has that guide layer. And if you're worried, we can come into this guide layer, right-click on it, and then set it as a guide layer, and then that's only going to be visible until you render out, and then that's it won't render out. All right, let's do some of the, the tracking shots. Now, I'm not actually going to do tracking on these first ones. If you remember in the video, um, just different little parts would highlight, and then he'd look right there, look at the car, and he would highlight. He'd look at me, and then I would kind of outline highlight. And so let's do that. That's pretty simple to do. So like just a few seconds in or a few frames in, let's just grab the ellipse tool. Make sure no layer is selected. And I'm going to just outline, then delete the fill. Let's go into the stroke. Let's change that stroke color to white. And that's obviously too wide. And let's just make it kind of fit and match. Now I'm going to go into that shape layer. Let's copy that ellipse. And let's move it so we've got two of them. Okay. Give it a name so we can recognize it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut right there. And that was just option or alt and then hit the left bracket. Let's go into the transform, keyframe the position. Let's go forward three frames and then just move it down. And then let's chop it on the other end. So that's just kind of just a little bit there. And that's kind of how it looks like if you watch the Terminator movie and things like that. Okay, we're doing the same thing right here. But instead of circles, let's use Make sure nothing's highlighted, use the pen tool. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we got two of those now and we just need one more. So let's do it right before the little fuzzy part. So again, we're gonna use just the pen tool. 
Let's see what that looks like. Looking pretty good. All right. Now let's start to do some of the, the graphics that are on the screen. First thing that I had was I had just the general uh, robotic analysis going on. So I'm going to just create that in another comp and bring it in here. So let's actually just bring in my words. Make sure you find a font that looks really computerish looking. The one I found was called OCRA standard. So there, let's pre-comp that, Command Shift C. Analysis, move all the attributes over, and let's go into this composition. So underneath that, we've got all sorts of stars. It's kind of what they had. Let's take those stars, bring them down in size. And then let's adjust. Like that's looking pretty good. Now underneath this, there was lots of numbers that were kind of moving around. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a text layer, type whatever, it doesn't matter. And then let's go to effect, all the way down to text, and then do numbers. It's going to bring up this little box here. Let's go in and get that same font, OCR A standard. Uh, direction will be horizontal. Alignment, I want to be onto the left. Okay. Let's make it white. Let's bring no decimal points. And let's set the value to 2000. And then we're going to, right here on the offset, let's, key, let's add an expression to that. So option, click on the stopwatch and go wiggle. And let's say, let's go maybe 15 and then 2000. And then that's just going to kind of just randomly pick numbers. Now the thing with this effect is it has its own position. If I move this around, this layer around, it doesn't matter. Um, I have to move it in here, and that's going to get to be a little bit difficult when I try to duplicate this and move things around. So in order to fix that, let's go in here to the position. We're going to take that. We're going to add an expression to this. So we're going to keep the same value that's in there. But then we're going to hit plus, and then pick with the position of the layer. And it went all crazy out of the way. But if I go in and take that layer position and zero it out, then it goes back to where it is. So then let's use the position of the effect and come in here. Let's also scale this up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And on the second layer, hit composite on original. And because I had already created that expression, I need to go in here and do one little change to it. I need to change this to numbers two. Okay, so let's move this over now. So there's side by side, and I like that. And instead of keeping on to uh, just duplicate these numbers all in the one composition, and that's why I connected it to the position. So what I can do now is just duplicate this, bring the position down, all the way to the bottom. And let's go into my align and distribute the layers. I just duplicated lots of them, distribute them in between, and now I've got this kind of a thing going on. Pretty cool. So when we go back into our original comp, and I stick it, let's stick it down lower, underneath the static spots, and I turn this optics compensation back on, Bring that to the top, and let's take that analysis, and now we can move this wherever we want. Maybe even scale it down. Looking pretty good. Let's see what it looks like when there's some static. Yep, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, now let's do the voice analysis. So on this footage, if I hit LL, it brings up my waveforms, and I can see here I've got some voice. You can see it down in the waveforms. And so let's create a new solid. We'll call this one voice. And let's go down to generate audio spectrum. And then in the audio, audio spectrum, the audio layer, let's take from the footage layer. And you can see it's, it's there pink, but let's make this white because we're doing all this in a white. And let's do some adjustments to this. We want it to be small. So let's bring the start point and the end point 
bring those in, change the maximum frequency, take down the softness, and then down here where it says side A or B, I can just choose to have the top. So let's move this down and let's put a box around it. So to do that, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just mask right around it. And then we're going to affect and then do a generate stroke. And it's going to create a stroke around this based off of the mask. I can come in, let's bring the mask in a little bit. And then now we have a nice little box down there. Okay, the last thing I want to do is, is let's do some tracking and we're going to track my face. Pick the point where we want to start tracking right after that static. Let's take this, I'm going to just duplicate this layer and then cut it to right there. Make sure your tracker window is open and let's do track motion. And we want to track position and scale. So let's put these right in the corners of my eye and then analyze forward. Okay, now and the track doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of what's cool about this is I kind of like the way that it looks if it's not perfect. So now let's come in and grab a new solid and we're gonna call this track mat. And then on the track, let's edit the target to that solid. Okay, hit apply. I'll say apply X and Y, yes. So let's highlight that solid and then grab the mask tool, mask the solid right around the face, turn that back on, and then that's gonna track right to it. Then what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna use it as a track mat. So let's grab the footage layer below it, hit alpha mat, and if we solo that layer, you can see that's following it. And then let's go to layer, layer styles, add a stroke, make that stroke white. And then at this point, let's add an effect to the layer below it. So we'll go to color correction, curves. Let's go back one frame, keyframe the curves, go forward to where that starts. And let's darken that all just to highlight. Okay, looking pretty good. Now we need to have the little line that kind of is tracking it too. So let's grab another text layer, write friend or foe. And actually let's put underneath it, computing, line everything up. And then let's grab a new layer, just a new solid, call this beam. Let's go to effect, generate beam. Again, let's make this white inside and outside color, bring the softness down to zero, and the thickness probably at five, and then the length, bring that to 100. On one end, I'm going to bring it right down to that, and on the other end, I need to add it to, have it link it to this. And what that is, is remember that's that track mat. So let's have the position of the track mat shown, Let's go to the beam and let's add an expression to the starting point and we'll go starting point plus the position of that track mat and it's going to go crazy. So let's take that starting point and zero it out. Now what I can do is let's just adjust manually. And I want it to be somewhat kind of by the corner, but I want it to stick in there a little bit because it does move around a little bit. And let's duplicate that track mat, bring it above the beam, and then we're going to do the same thing. So do alpha inverted, and then it will go in and cut right where we need it to. Let's see what this looks like so far. Okay. Looking pretty good. And the last thing is just having the loading screen. And I might have to come in and maybe take this friend or foe. Move it here. Let's go back to the beam. And what I did for the loading screen is I just used my, my progress bar preset. 
If you don't have the preset, you can. there's a link in the description where you can go get it. There's also a link to a tutorial on how to create it, but some people just prefer to use this because it's a lot easier than creating one out of the tutorial. So, and then let's just change the look of this to be more of a flat look. And there. And you know what I'm going to do because it's kind of a cool feature is let's move this friend or foe down. And then what I've got is in this progress bar, I have this anchor point. And what that is, is it's right there where that anchor point is, where the, the progress is. So if I come into beam, well, let's go back to the progress bar, make sure it has a name. And we want that also down below everything. Let's put it right by the beam. But let's lock that layer so we can see that anchor point there. Let's go into the beam, and we're going to take this ending point, and we're going to pick whip it. So just use Option or Alt click on the stopwatch, pick whip that to the anchor point. And now let's go to the start of right where he starts tracking. We're going to take the progress bar and the friend or foe. We're going to cut those, and also the beam. So they just kind of start. And let's take the progress bar. Let's bring that progress to the beginning or near the beginning. Keyframe that. Go towards the end. And then you can see that beam is following that progress bar. Pretty cool. All right. So let's go in. I'm going to just turn off my guide layer, turn on my optics. And let's take a look at this fully rendered. All right. So there it is. So that is doing some Terminator type vision. Now, some things you can do this to make it a little bit nicer is um, what I did also in the example is I added a little bit of blur around the edges with the vignette. I also had uh, added glow to the text. And well, actually, anything that was white, I added a glow to. Uh, looked like it was kind of bleeding onto the screen. Um, trying to make just kind of like an old CRT type screen. So, but that's something easy you can do. Just add some glow, add a little bit of blur around the edge. Um, but I hope you learned a lot. I, there's some cool little tips in here about also linking stuff up with uh, different expressions. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below and I can address them. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We do new tutorials like this every week. We actually have two different videos we put out a week. On Wednesdays, our quick tips. These are one, two minute videos on just a quick little tip in After Effects. And then Fridays is a video like this one where we do longer, more in-depth tutorials. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.